I have not made a video in a minute. This one's kind of an interesting one because I have the 5.3 here pretty much all finished up. Sitting on a rolly stain, painted black, got a Holly 600 on it, oil pan's done, but I'm going to put this motor into something different. I changed my mind about putting in Pop's wagon. Um, probably going to pick up an S10, maybe a third generation mullet firebird. Instead, I picked up this turd, and she is a dirty, dirty girl. That's after we scraped her. Circa 77 through 79, Oldsmobile 403. I found a couple of these. Unfortunately, I only used one of them originally in the Cutlass. And 15 years ago already, it's, it's almost a little tough to say. I was in high school. Standard board. Boards aren't in bad shape. I only got one little boo-boo here. And you can barely feel it when you run your fingers across it. Broken ring. I'm going to run it. I'm going to put as minimal amount of money into this motor as possible. 403. As dirty as this thing is, uh, surprisingly, the bearings are not in bad shape. Before I put it all back together, I'm going to mic it or plastic gauge it. Probably plastic gauge it. But one thing to pay attention to on most V8s back in the day with the adjustable accessories, the bearing shell here would be worn copper. A lot of times people would get a little belt squeal and they'd over tighten their water pump belt and their alternator belt. And I'd put an excess load here and starve the bearing and would copper it. Not in this case. This motor was pulled from a Trans Am 79, I believe. Yeah, I mean, she's dirty, but the bearings are not in bad shape. I mean, currently, i got a couple of pistons here soaking in some carb cleaner. Pistons are in great shape, too. I'll show you a couple of them here in a second. Water pump junk core. It's going to get replaced. As for the heads, here's a stock 4A head. This is what came on the 403. They use big block style uh, combustion chambers. You can use the big block style standard 2 inch intake valve and a 1.5 inch small block exhaust. This is the 73 through 76 J head, which I'm, end up gonna, I'm probably going to end up running. These were milled a little bit. 2 inch, familiar 2 inch intake valve and a 1.625 exhaust valve. Uh, J heads are in stock form. Weak at best for all out performance, but you know, you put a big block on a light car, it's still going to run pretty good. But overall, I believe this would, these heads will work. Uh, I don't have my flashlight to show you, but I know it's got all new guides, valve guides, excuse me, pressed in. And these heads, these four A's are just scrap. I might hold on to them or barter them, barter them with some, someone's going to use them. But I've got no desire to use them. Uh, I put a big block head on it, small block holes. Four A's use a half inch head bolt. Which is smarter, more clamping force, 455, 76, 455 small blocks, all of them. And, and the small blocks, I mean, they all use a yeah, 716s. So it needs to get punched. The intake ports are a lot different too. You have a small intake port on the 4A and all small block old heads. It uses a bigger 237 intake length, or yeah, length on a big block, so a big block old head. <clears throat> so for what I'm doing, this is going to go on a dad's wagon. I work up the heads a little bit, grind out the EGR bumps, see if I can locate some steel shim head gaskets to try to get at least eight and a half to one compression. Uh, and I'm going to use a factory iron intake from what I was told, but I won't know until I actually mock it up that there's enough meat at the intake so I can port match. match. It's one of the few factory intakes that actually will be able to work for what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'd have to buy a Performer RPM. All my pieces, parts here, they were in the Sonic at work. We have a caustic Sonic bath, 200 degree. Yeah, the 60 pound intake manifold. Man, technology has changed. You get a 60 pound intake manifold made of cast iron. Nowadays, you have a five pound 
uh, plastic intake or vinyl or whatever you call it. Just got done cleaning the crank this morning. I had it sitting in a five gallon bucket of purple power. Hit it with some oven cleaner. It's not in bad shape. I can't even feel these. I'm gonna polish it anyways with some crocus cloth. Probably gonna be using the bearings. Hey, look at the bearings. These pistons I already spent some time cleaning up a little bit. I'm gonna go back and clean the ring grooves out. You see the wear mark there for where the the bearing strikes the uh, crankshaft on the power stroke. It's not bad. I mean, no copper. But I'm gonna plastic gauge these one more time before I put it all back together. I mean, the pistons are even in pretty good shape. I mean, look at this. This is my buddy Tony. He's been bugging me for a video. I mean, you could feel all the factory knurling. Usually that's all gone and worn away. But for what I'm doing, gaskets, rings, baby bearings, cheap cam, small mild cam, RV cam, whatever you call it. Coolest thing about these engines even though they only produced them for two years, they had the largest bore out of any factory V8 uh, rolled out of General Motors, with the exception of the 502 Chevy, but that was not a factory engine. The only issue is you get very little room for head gasket sealing, so no more than a 40 thousandths overbore is recommended on the motor. Yeah, I picked it up from my buddy Mike. He went a different direction with his project. I'm like, well, this would be more appropriate for the custom cruiser since it already has a 307 in it. Minimal investment, I'll get the motor running. Like I said, the only concern is this. It looks worse than it is. And it's the only cylinder with any kind of a ridge. I mean, very slight. Like the pistons came out without a ridge reamer. Without, with very minimal effort. I mean, you can't barely feel that. Just these front two. This one you have one you can feel a little bit. I got a dingle ball home, so I'm going to clean this up. I ran a three stone home through it, but it's very rigid and you, you don't get in all the areas. Not too much taper. And I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to check the run out to make sure the cylinders aren't egg shaped. Because then at that point, I'll just you know, scrap it. Wouldn't be worth it for me to overboard for what I'm doing. Alrighty. It's kind of a long video, but maybe we'll give you guys an update of what's going on. And, you know, this isn't exactly what most people are going with nowadays. They all want that sweet fancy LS power but I'm gonna save it for something light because it's a high rev motor this bad boy was made for torque alrighty if I don't hear from you guys in the comments or private messages I want all of you guys to have a Merry Christmas if you guys celebrate if you don't celebrate have a Merry Christmas or have a happy holiday whatever you celebrate just enjoy yourselves and your family you guys take care